Welcome everybody to tonight's candidate forum for the Central and Elementary School Committee. My name is Aaron Fowle. I'm the uh, head of adult services and temporarily acting director of the Sunderland Public Library and we're pleased to host tonight's forum among the four candidates running for the two open seats on the school committee for Sunderland. Um, a couple of logistics first. Um, we will have each candidate speak for at most 10 minutes. They will introduce themselves they will tell you why they're running. They'll tell you what their aims are, their goals, what their qualifications and background are to qualify them for the school committee position, what they think uh, the pressing issues are today facing the school and whatever else they want to say. After that, we'll open it up to questions from assembled guests. And uh, what I'd like you to do is indicate in the chat feature that you would wish to ask a question, and then I will uh, call on you to ask your question. Please remain muted unless you are the person speaker speaking, because otherwise the video will start jumping around. Some more people coming in. Okay, I would like to first call upon Allison Booth Mayo candidate for Central Elementary School Committee to address this forum. Thank you and welcome to everybody. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Allison Booth Mayo. And before I begin, I would like to thank very much the Sunderland Public Library for sponsoring this candidates night to, to get to know the four candidates that are running for the two seats um, and especially uh, Acting Director Aaron Falbell for putting this together. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I've lived in Sunderland for over a decade and I've lived in the area for much of my life. Uh, I live here with my husband and my two children. My daughter uh, is in seventh grade. She com completed um, her time at Sunderland Elementary in the spring and my son is in the fifth grade currently at Sunderland Elementary. Overall, each of my kids have had very positive experiences at the school. Um, I feel like it's a really special school. Um, it has a strong sense of community. It has caring teachers and staff. It is racially and culturally diverse. Um, and I'm really thankful that this is where my kids have been able to spend their formative years. In terms of my professional background, I'm a lawyer and I work in the financial services industry. I'm a critical and independent thinker. I'm detail oriented and thorough and I assess issues based on logic and facts. My decision to run for school committee was a gradual one. I can't imagine that there's ever been a time when school committees have had this degree of responsibility and when its decisions have had any greater importance to children, families, and the community than over the past year. School committees locally and across the country have been largely responsible uh, for determining whether schools could reopen for in-person learning or whether they must remain remote only. School committee's decisions drove not only whether children received the significantly increased benefits of an in-person education, but even more critically, whether kids saw their peers or remained isolated in their homes. These decisions also drove whether some parents could remain employed or whether they needed to leave their jobs or limit their hours in order to be at home with their children. Pamun Rahanaford, a member of the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, called keeping schools closed the most significant failure of public policy in a generation. As scientific data from reputable sources became available that demonstrated that schools are not a significant source of spread and that the isolation from remote learning was having a severely negative impact on children, I became passionate about the need for science-based decisions on school reopening. 
I joined in advocacy efforts at the state level, and I involved myself locally by making public comment at many, if not most, Sunderland School Committee meetings. While recognizing that the Sunderland School Committee's extremely difficult job and the countless hours they put into their role this year, the actions of the school committee or the inaction in some cases were not always based on health metrics or case counts or any spread of COVID in schools, but instead based on political pressure. After this year, it has never been more clear how important school is in the life of a child. And this is what has motivated me to run for school committee. I'm seeking this position because I feel strongly that more voices are needed on the committee to advocate for the needs of children and families. I will make assessments of issues based on logic, facts, and true caring for the community and Sunderland Elementary School. As is required by the school committee's code of ethics, I will recognize that my primary responsibility is to the children and will advocate and cast my vote accordingly. Very thankfully, elementary students statewide are back to being in school, in person, full time due to a state mandate. However, the pandemic is not over and the effects of remote learning and isolation on children are going to need to be addressed over the short term and beyond. In my view, the current priorities for the school committee should be as follows. Priority number one, develop policies to address learning loss. I will advocate for the development of a comprehensive plan to address learning loss and to narrow achievement gaps exacerbated by remote learning. Priority number two, develop policies to address mental health needs. I will advocate for increased mental health supports to address emotional needs. I will encourage any COVID relief funds the school may receive be used for these academic and mental health plans. Priority number three, bring about normalcy for children as soon as possible. There are important decisions on the horizon on how quickly to normalize the school environment. Of course, with Sunderland Elementary just having reopened for full-time in-person learning, all, all COVID safety protocols are and should remain in place. As time goes by and a greater percentage of our adult population is vaccinated, however, I will seek incremental reductions of COVID protocols. The goal should be a return to full normalcy for children as soon as it is reasonably safe as determined based on guidance from the scientific and medical communities. Moving on from these three priorities I've outlined, a key role of the school committee is to approve the annual budget. I support responsible spending and also the idea that schools should be sufficiently funded. Good schools not only benefit children, but the broader community. Having worked in the financial services industry, I have the background necessary to fulfill the role of a school committee member with respect to budgets. I'd also like to share a few of my other philosophies, thoughts, and qualifications. I will consider the needs of children of all backgrounds and situations. I have experienced navigating the 504 plan process, so I would bring that perspective with me. I will listen to community concerns and expect full transparency by the committee with, with the public as allowed by law. I have confidence in the schools and the district's current administrations and will give due consideration to the administration's goals and views. I will actively partic participate in school committee meetings and bring my ideas. I will be collaborative and cooperative with other members of the committee, but I will not hesitate to speak up with a different idea or an opposing view when needed. In closing, I would be honored to serve the Sunderland community, community as a member of the school committee. I believe I'm well positioned to analyze and decide on the complicated and critical issues the committee will continue to face. I will put the needs of children first, and I will work hard for the community in this role. I would appreciate your vote on Saturday, May 1st. Thank you. Thank you very much, Allison, and thank you also for 
adhering so precisely to my 10 minute uh, uh, guidelines. Um, for those of you who just joined the meeting, we'll be hearing first from each of the candidates uh, who will tell you a little bit about themselves, their qualifications, why they're running, what they hope to accomplish, what the main issues they see confronting the school committee are today. Next, we'll hear from Megan Arquin. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say hello to everybody and thank you to Aaron also in the <clears throat> Sunderland Public Library for organizing and holding space for us to meet and talk. <clears throat> I also would like to thank the candidates and the members of community that came out to meet and get to know us all a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, my name is Megan Arquin and I have been a Sunderland resident for 15 years. I came to live here because my husband and I were able to purchase some land near the river and with that land, we continued operating Riverland Farm, CSA, and Organic Vegetable Farm. Many families and households from Sunderland were members at our farm, and it was in those weekly conversations as people came to pick up their vegetables that I started to become more present to Sunderland as my community. When my kids started to attend Sunderland Elementary School, we leaned into participating as we could. Early on, the farm was very demanding of our time. However, it was always important to me for the farm to have a connection with the school. We donated vegetables and shares to fundraising events. We participated in the Farmy Fresh and Fun campaign to advocate and represent Sunderland's rich agricultural community. Also, we would grow vegetable starts for the school gardens and have some classes to come to the farm as a field trip. My boys, Caden and Charlie, Caden, the older one in fourth grade and Charlie is in first grade started to move through the grades and we were getting to know their teachers and staff a little bit better at Sunderland Elementary. One thing that I've always admired about the school culture is the intention of the older students interacting with the younger students and the relationships that were built out from there. Some mornings if I did not walk Charlie or Caden all the way to the door, an older student would inevitably greet him or her and help them cross the circle where the buses park. And in these acts of kindness, uh, excuse me, the acts of kindness happened because of this the environment created by the teachers and Principal Barshevsky, and I thank them for making that an important part of the school experience. Since the pandemic and the closing of the schools, my husband and I leaned into understanding the school's decision process a little bit more. There are many factors that go into developing policies and systems to keep the children and the staff and families safe as the students went back to school. <clears throat> All of these things are what interested me in being a part of the school committee. In the last year, I have been more active within many of the town committees. Recently, I've become co-chair of the Community Preservation Committee, a member of the Open Space Committee, and for a number of years, I've served on the Agricultural Commission. I am new to the members of these committees for their encouragement and trust in me. What I appreciate both about the school and all the committees is that there is a collaboration amongst the bodies that aim to support the whole intention, investment, and mission of the community keeping Sunderland beautiful and relevant in our changing world. Having operated a farm business that has to adapt to the many facets of weather and unique groups of people that come to work with us, there demands patience and intention towards healthy communication while maintaining the financial stability of the farm. Humility in making difficult choices and acknowledging past mistakes and using them as an opportunity for growth. I am a team player. I'm the kind of person that tries to see and hear all sides of the discussion without judgment. I like to understand the experiences that bring everyone to the table and generate informed ideas and opinions. I believe that the results of my decisions as a part of the school committee will be based in the interests of the students the faculty and our broader community. Now, I don't presume to know all the answers right now, but I understand that the various responsibilities ahead of the school committee include the school budget, the ongoing response to the pandemic, and how the school can maintain in-person class diversity and inclusiveness for all students. I think of this as an exciting opportunity to be a part of the school in the town in a new way to utilize my skill sets and the relationships I have built while living here to bring the committee all I can to be useful and effective in the tasks that face the com committee ahead. 
Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Uh, next, we will hear from Peter Gagarin, who, as many people know, is currently an incumbent on the school committee and is running for re-election. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for organizing this. I noticed your warning that we would be cut off if we went too, went too long, and I figured the best thing was to write out what I wanted to say and then just read it. I should be done with plenty of time to spare. Good evening, everyone. My name is Peter Gagarin. I've been a member of the Sunderland School Committee for three and a half years. I'm asking for your support in the upcoming election. My wife, Gail, and I have lived in Sunderland for 36 years. I've been involved in Sunderland's town government for much of the last 30 years. I was on the Finance Committee for seven years and chair for the last five of them. That was followed by four years as a community member on the Elementary School Council, which in turn was followed by about four years on the Library Building Committee, building our new library. At that point, I took a break as my work, a tax business, was getting increasingly busy and was concentrated in January through April, the same time as much of the town's work gets done in preparation for annual town meeting. After I retired, I looked to get back involved in the town. I was most interested in the school committee and felt I could make a contribution. A vacancy opened up in 2017 and I was appointed to fill it. In 2018, I was elected in my own right. I've been fortunate to have had a good education myself. I have a BA from Harvard in mathematics. I have been a member of the board of directors and treasurer for two local nonprofits. I believe in giving back. I understand municipal finance and budgeting in general and school finance and budgeting in particular. From my time on the finance committee, I learned to always consider what's best for the whole town not what's best for a particular group. From my time on the library building committee, where we, brought the where we brought the project in on time and on budget, I learned the importance of regular communication with the select board. I bring these things to the school committee where the following are always on my mind. One, not just how do we get more resources, but how do we use our resources better? Two, the school is a fundamental part of the town. We do not have the school here and the town there, each with its own turf. They have to work together. And three, how do we keep improving learning for all of our students? I think about what's best for the whole town. I think about how we can communicate better, not just talking, but also listening. I think about how we can do things better. And in the past year, there have been the challenges of dealing with the pandemic. My role on the school committee. I have the most knowledge of and the most interest in the school finances. I'm always thinking about how we can do things better, always trying to look ahead to anticipate problems. I understand the process by which the town makes decisions. I attend lots of select board meetings to make sure we know what they are doing and they know what we are doing. I'm on the town's capital planning committee, not just looking out for the school's interest, but also for the whole town's interest, trying to make good decisions. Gail and I don't have any children, and I'm a generation removed from the other committee members, but I know I add a lot, and I certainly have the time and the willingness to work. We have a great town. We have a great local government. I wanna do what I can to make sure we have a school that the town is proud of, whether or not you have kids in the school. I want young families to want to live here so that we don't become a town of mostly old people. And right now, we absolutely do have a school the town can be proud of. The past 13 months with COVID have been a challenge. The administration and teaching staff have worked incredibly hard to offer the best education possible under constantly changing circumstances. We have had lots of meetings and lots of people at many of the meetings speaking passionately about what they want us to do regarding remote versus in-person in learning. We have tried to find the right balance, wanting to have kids in school as much as possible, also wanting to do everything possible to ensure that everyone is safe. 
It has not been easy. We are not done yet. But as I look back and look at what other districts in the area have done, I feel very proud of what our school has managed to do. When I joined the school committee in late 2017, we had a different superintendent and a different business manager. By the next spring, the superintendent was on the way out. We had a joint meeting of all five school committees to decide what to do. Many spoke in favor of doing a full search. We also had an in-house candidate for the position, Darius Modesto, principal at Frontier. I spoke strongly in favor of hiring Darius, and that is what we did. It was the most important and best decision we've made in my time on the school committee. He has been great. That has been especially true of the last 13 months with COVID. The business manager is also gone. Darius hired Shelley Pareda, a Sunderland resident, and she is fabulous, a huge improvement. The school is in good hands. There are five words that I think about all the time. Respect, honesty, transparency, communication, trust. Respect everyone you deal with. That should be a given. Be honest. It's so much easier to just tell the truth. Transparency. School finances are complicated. Strive to help others understand them. Communication. Just keep talking to each other, both within the school and within the town. It's amazing how much it helps. And trust. How much more can be accomplished when we trust each other. I'm 76 years old. I get some exercise just about every day, hiking or biking or running. I eat a healthy diet. I love living in Sunderland. I hope to be able to contribute to the town for many years to come. I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And now we will hear from Kara Gorey, the fourth candidate running for the two open seats on the school committee. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Aaron, for facilitating this important um, democratic um, democracy event. Um, you were great in facilitating a fair um, outline of how this would go. And I wanted to thank the Sunderland Library for that fair um, forum, right? This is a forum. Um, I also probably saw me kind of distracted. I write, <clears throat> I love writing, and I also love listening. And I listened to the ones that spoke before me. And um, I do takeaways. I'm, I'm kind of going on a tangent here. I promise I'll bring it back. Um, I want to pay respect to the people that just spoke, and that's why, where I'm going with this. Um, Allison, um, thank you for your work at the state level um, and uh, just being involved in, in democracy and as a parent. Um, thank you. And um, Megan, thank you for nourishing our kids. Um, that's amazing that you did a field trip at your farm. Like, that's awesome. And that's the part of school that I remember. So thank you. Um, and Peter, I don't really have to say anything, right? Because you've been here a very long time. Um, before the meeting started, I said to Peter that um, a lot of my research leading me to run, or I don't even know if that's the term I use, run, but um, to do this, I had to do a lot of research. And one of the things was I got to know Peter quite well. I um, Cable's not good anymore. Um, I binge watched um, the uh, school committee meetings and uh, the select board meetings. <laughs> oh, I'm not crazy. Okay, so I prepared a statement um, that I'm gonna read and um, we're gonna go from there. Just give me a moment, please. I was moved and inspired to join the Sunderland School Committee. I think they are doing a fantastic job. I was 
happy that there were two seats. I was also happy that there were four of us running so there would be two, two of us that didn't get in so that there was an odd man out. I lived in the town of Sunderland since 2014. My husband and I have two toddlers. Um, it's hard to talk about your kids without talking about yourself and it feels really weird. So I reached out to their, um, they attend a home daycare two days a week and I reached out to her and I said, can you please tell me two words to describe my kids? And she said, kind and imaginative. And I said, okay, I'll take that. Becoming a mom has been honestly the most rewarding and exhausting part of my life thus far. I consider myself extremely fortunate to have the historical background knowledge of education to guide me. I was the daughter of a first grade teacher in South Deerfield, a granddaughter of a trade school teacher at Smith Vocational School, a student in the K through 12 Hatfield public school system. I received a bachelor's in education from Wake Westfield State College, that's now Westfield State University. I started teaching full-time in Deerfield when I left. Um, when I graduated from Westfield State College, um, I was thrilled, but I started my journey um, as a student teacher there. So I did my practicum in third grade and I was taught at school that if you love your job and you're passionate about it, that you should do something about it. And that's why I'm here. I was taught in school that schools are pillars of democracy. And I don't really like the word pillar, but kind of what many of the candidates mentioned, a support system, right? It takes a village to raise our children as Megan pointed out. In March 2020, the unthinkable happened. A worldwide pandemic closed the physical doors of our schools. And it wasn't the kind of school I remember because what I remember from my 16 plus years at Deerfield Elementary was it was hard to agree to cancel school for a snow day. And students, teachers, caregivers, parents, administrators were pushed to think outside of their comfort levels and boxes to support students. As a passionate, dedicated, and respected educator in Massachusetts, I gasped as I watched the pandemic bring increased screen time and isolation. Trust me when I say that the social and emotional health effects of this pandemic are real and long lasting. To all students, and I even have a connection to the graduating class of Frontier Regional, thank you for your resiliency. You are living through unprecedented times in our nation's history. I did a lot of brainstorming um, and a lot of thinking before I ran. And for me to choose any one thing to talk about would be difficult. So um, I'm going to ask that the community come forth with your questions. Um, if you see me doing something, it's just thinking. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. At this point, uh, we'd be happy to entertain questions from our assembled guests. And uh, the way I think we need to do that is if you wish to ask a question, please just indicate that in the chat area. You don't have to type your question into the chat, but just let me know that you wish to ask a question. And then I will ask you to unmute yourself and ask. You may ask your question to individual candidate, a specific candidate, or you can ask your question to all of the candidates. Please indicate that um, at the beginning. I will remind people, as I said at the beginning, that uh, tonight's forum is being recorded and live streamed by FCAP. So it can be viewed um, all the way up until the election, which will take place on May 1st, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. at the Sunderland Public Library. 
Early in-person in voting is also available at the town offices building right next door to the library starting on April 26th. Um, you can also vote by mail-in ballot if you prefer. The deadline for applications for a mail-in ballot are, is Tuesday, um, April 27th. So at this point, I will open it up to questions. Does anyone have anything to ask? Pedro Cerrone. Hello, I have a question for all the candidates. Knowing that 34% of Sunderland students are on an IEP, many of which are very high needs, how do you feel about getting more special education out of district placements to help increase funds for, for the budget? I, I imagine since I spoke first, maybe I should tackle that question first. And I just want to make sure that I they, uh, that I understand that the proposal would be to have out of district students placed within Sunderland with um, with special needs. Is that and and it would be motivated in order to increase revenue? Is that is that what's proposed? Yes. So um, out of district placements are when a school cannot fulfill the IEP of a child. So they look for another school that can, and it can range anywhere from 60 to $80,000 a year. So it's very lucrative for the school who can take them. Um, but just knowing that we have 34% who are already on an IEP, I'm interested with how everyone feels. Well, um, I guess my reaction to that um, is that I, I would want to know more about it. Um, I am someone who really likes to or needs to understand all of the details um, of a proposal before making a decision or casting my vote. Um, you know, to, my initial reaction is we need to put um, the needs of the current students that we have first before entertaining the idea of, of bringing in additional students. Um, but it, it would be something that I certainly have, would have an open mind to hearing different points of view and, and your view in particular, given your role. Can I go next? Yes, Kara, next. Okay, so this is my first time doing a meeting like this with it would not be my family, so I apologize. <clears throat> um, Aja, thank you so much. Um, I, as a mother of two toddlers, <clears throat> have had the privilege of getting involved with early intervention. Um, as a teacher, I completely support early intervention. I've actually seen the pandemic um, create a big disconnect so that um, kids that need special education services um, have trouble accessing. So I'll give you an example. Um, uh, when the pandemic started, my daughter was getting PT um, and it stopped. Um, suddenly, I became the facilitator of her PT via a Zoom meeting. Um, and I'm, I'm going on about myself, but I wanted to say that I'm, I support special education I support early intervention. And I, like Allison, just need more information. Um, so I, I, I'm not against it. Um, I just would like more information because I think we need to some, connect some dots and um, just kind of get the systems working more fluid together. But I would be happy to listen to hear more about this. Thank you. Peter or Megan, do you want to weigh in on this? Sure, I'll, um, I'll just say that I think there's, this is something that the school has done sporadically in the past. Uh, I've been aware of cases where we've had up to three uh, tuition in students at, at any one time. Um, it's something you need, to, you need to be careful about. You need to make sure that a financial reason doesn't override 
the educational issues. Um, if you can find a case where there is a good match and there, you know, and it makes, it has to first really make sense for both the kids uh, needs and for how it fits in with the school's, you know, total educational responsibilities. Okay. And if it does fit, then you can pursue it. But the idea of being out and recruiting, um, I would be really careful with that. Uh, like I said, we have had a couple of cases, um, particularly with another school in the district where everybody was familiar with everybody else. And I think that was beneficial because our school was able to offer something that the other school wasn't, um, and we got compensated for it. Um, but you have to be careful. Thank you. Megan, would you like to comment? Um, I would. I, I think I <clears throat> have similar things to say as the other candidates. Uh, there are definitely a lot of questions that I would want to ask and understand, you know, understanding what what the school feels like, the capacity for a percentage of IEP students. And, um, and I do like the idea of there being a good fit for the school and for the student. I, I, you know, these things are obviously new for me, but the idea of um, drawing that in as a financial um, element in the budget is, is something that I understand and I, I get nervous about because students may need to shift and change. And so if, if that becomes money that is depend, dependent upon, um, then, then that makes me a little more nervous or makes me want to ask more questions anyhow. But, um, but yeah, I do think that more information is important before all decisions being made. I also have lost all video feeds, so I can't see all your beautiful faces in the <laughs> So <laughs> Megan, I'm alone. You, you might want to leave the meeting and log back in again. Sometimes that will fix it. Um, may, I I make, may I make one additional comment in response to that question? Yes, a brief one, please. Okay. Uh, yes, no, I just wanted to say I understand that there has been a desire and a need for some time to have an additional um, staff member in the special education area. So that would be certainly a consideration in, in, um, in, in terms of considering the, the particular proposal that was asked about. Would there be, you know, bringing someone in and, and getting the revenue, would that end up being a net benefit to the special education program or a net detriment? Um, so yeah, in line with that, what everyone in, has said more, more information would be needed. Thank you. I think uh, next Bruce Bennett said he wanted to make a comment. Are you there, Bruce? Bruce, are you there? Well, um, I see Bruce is at the meeting, but he doesn't seem to be able to, oh, now he's rejoining it. Maybe he's having also some trouble with uh, his connection there. Um, I'm here now. There you are. We're getting some feedback. Uh, I, I know I got two things going here and I can't figure it out. If you have two different devices, they're going to exhibit feedback. Let me continue on. I'm going to close out everything and I'll rejoin. Okay. Uh, anyone else wish to ask any questions at this point? Uh, David Bout has a question. Hi, everybody. Thank you for um, volunteering to run for um, the, this important position. I had a question about just getting the general sense from the candidates about how they feel about the recent anti-racism curriculum in the uh, school district. It, it's, you know, coming on the, on the heels of a really important <clears throat> decision yesterday and the reckoning that's happening right now. I just was curious to hear about, um, you know, the school committee candidates feeling towards 
um, talking about these issues with our young children. Thank you. Who would have liked to address that question? Kara uh, and then Peter. Hi, David. Thank you for being here tonight and asking your question. <clears throat> um, I actually have done a little bit of research on this. Um, and I can tell you what I know is um, the question if this falls under school policy. Um, I don't know how, I, I, okay, let me back up. I have a friend who um, is doing a lot of work, um, important work with the um, new curriculum. And I know her heart is in the right place. Um, and she's doing fabulous work <laughs> and I'm proud of her. Um, I need more information. I, I went on, um, I think it was the Deerfield website and I know Hadley, um, but I went on the website and I thought of myself as a teacher facilitating that um, curriculum, right? Because I, I have to have a point of reference. Um, and I would say that I have more questions, um, but that I'm in support of conversations for everyone. And, um, that's what I would say about that. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I, I think that what is being done needs to be done. Um, it started as a result of a letter that was sent by a large number of, of alumni in the, in the range of 200 alumni of uh, Frontier um, that said that we are failing in terms of our uh, of dealing with this and things need to be done because um, it, it's not a good situation. Uh, essentially, the superintendent has, uh, this is going on at the same time that COVID is going on and he's got way more than enough to do already, but he has taken this and instead of just sort of shelving it the way it could have been done, okay, he's taken it and said, yeah, we got to pay attention to this. Okay, we got to pay attention to this. So we have been getting uh, on our school committee, we've been getting uh, briefings. They hired, uh, they, they've got two different consultants, uh, both young, both female. Uh, one is working more with the middle and high school. One is working with the elementary schools. Uh, the one working with the elementary schools, Amanda Mosea came and briefed us at our first meeting this fall. September, uh, it turns out she went to Sunderland Elementary School. She went to Frontier. She's a person of color and she is really smart and really presents herself well. And, and it was just like, boy, it's so nice to see this. It, you know, this is, this is what can come out of our district in terms of just a top flight person. What they have done is they have work to develop age appropriate uh, uh, curriculum, okay, for uh, the students. And so it's quite different what they're doing at the high school to what they're doing at the elementary schools. And it's quite different what they're doing in the upper grades in the elementary school and what they're doing in the lower grades in the elementary school. And they're very aware of, you know, what kids are able to assimilate and not. But they, th the feeling is that I totally agree with that doing something in this area and doing a little more each year in this area is absolutely needed, okay? And if you look at what is happening, um, you know, George Floyd and all the other things happening in this country, um, I think that I'm impressed by what they're doing, okay? And we have asked on the school committee, please, you know, make sure that, that uh, you don't spare us in your, uh, you know, suggestions for things that need to change because we all have things that we could do better. Okay, but I think it's great. I think they're doing a lot of professional development with the teachers so that they're comfortable doing this. Um, one of the uh, other members of the school committee, Keith McFarland, is, uh, has, has kids at Frontier and he's also a teacher in the Amherst system and he says it's great because also the conversations are coming back home. Okay, and they're talking about this stuff. And I don't know about you all, but I know we didn't talk about this when I was growing up. And uh, 
so on. So again, I'm fully in support of this. Thank you, Peter. Um, Allison or Megan, do you want to weigh in on this question or shall we move on? You, mute, you muted. Oh, hi. <laughs> may, may I proceed? I wasn't sure if Megan, if you're going to go, but okay. <laughs> um, one thing that I would like to say is how very fortunate we are at Sunderland Elementary School to have the racial and cultural diversity that we do. I think it is really unusual really for our area. I grew up locally and it could count on one hand how many um, you know non-white folks were at our school. Um, so the, the last time I checked on the Department of Education uh, website, Sunderland Elementary was 31% uh, non-white. Um, and that has so many benefits, one of which is that I think um, one of the remedies for racism is being exposed to people of other races, other cultures. It's a remedy for discrimination in general to be um, exposed to different um, dif people of different races and backgrounds. Um, in terms of anti-racism curriculum, I have a little bit of familiarity with what the district um, is doing right now. Um, and I do support a review of the curriculum in order to um, ensure that it is more representative of people of different races, ethnicities, cultures, backgrounds. Thank you. Uh, Megan, did you have anything to add? Um, I, yeah, I just want to say that I'm very supportive of, of the, this beginning to the anti-racism education. I similarly watched some, some old videos of the meetings to prepare myself for, for what is to be expected and how, you know, how the meetings are, are going. And I, I happened to see the one that Andrea Mose was in, and I felt like I felt very thankful that there was somebody who not only was a student of the school, but that came back to give that feedback that, you know, there, there were problems because I think that that's ultimately one of the harder things is that even, even in the, a school that can be as, as, as diverse as it is, <clears throat> there has to be the voice and, and maybe that was a challenging place uh, for her or for others, all the students that wrote the, the letter. But I also, so just feel super thankful that they're, you know, that they're willing to come back and come into the school and you know, the professional development and the plan to try to implement this slowly or to adjust the education and the curriculum to be a little bit more diverse in its perspective um, it plays out in the classroom and um, and how it will affect Megan I think we're having a little trouble with your audio there Looks like uh, you're frozen up all together now. Um, I guess we can try to go to a, the next question. Hopefully Megan will sort herself out there. Um, next we'll hear from, yeah, we still can't hear you. Next we'll hear from Jessica Corwin, who has a question. And then I think Bruce Bennett is back with us and followed uh, by Nathaniel Waring. So Jessica Corwin, I think you're on. Uh, thanks. Uh, so I've got a question. Um, Peter can answer this if he wants, but as an incumbent, I already know where he, I already know what he has to offer. Um, I'm curious what the other three of you um, have to offer for the budgeting process beyond listening and voting, and particularly what you might be able to offer outside of the time and space of school committee meetings.
Who would like to go? All right, Kara. Hi, Jess. Um, I've watched you on the screen before, and I think we may have passed each other at the town caucus. But um, uh, thank you for your question, and thank you for your work with the Sunderland School Committee. Um, I know I can tell how close you and Peter are, and um, I definitely, you know, support whatever the voters of Sunderland, you know, want. Um, to get back to your question, um, and can you just repeat it again and rephrase it? Because I'm a little bit scattered and I apologize. I was trying to listen and, and tell you I was listening to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I think Megan might have missed it with her internet connection. Uh, what can you offer to the budgeting process? In particular, what can you offer that doesn't just take place within the time and space of school committee meetings? What experience, what connections, what, what skills, what efforts can you offer? Thank you. So, um, well, when I was a teacher, um, money uh, was not was not our thing, you know. Every um, and that's the thing as a teacher, um, and that's the background I come from. Um, we have nothing, no input um, about money. So um, I'm new to it. Um, I like to learn. Uh, I own a small business with my husband. Um, what else? I senior year of college, um, spring semester, I worked in the business office um, at Westfield State College, that's now university. Um, I hope, is my degree still good? Oh, I don't know, I hope that didn't change. Um, but that would be my thing, is I guess a passion for learning. And I, um, I have the time, I, I made a plan for this. I, my parents are gonna watch the kids if my husband can't. Um, and I've set aside time because time is very short and um, we're gonna use our time wisely. So um, I have the time and the desire to learn, but that's all for money. Thank you. Uh, Megan, do you wanna try again? Let's hope we can hear you this time. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure when I got cut out on my last, um answer but um you know my my financial abilities would be stemming from running the farm business uh with my husband and you know obviously that probably looks very different than a school budget and so i feel like you know looking through the numbers and and asking lots of questions and trying to make sure that i'm aware of of all of those things but i, I feel like um you know within the school committee and and whoever else gets to participate in that conversation. I, you know, I feel like what I would want to do is really understand what, what they feel like are the, are the sort of areas that are untouchable or things that feel like they're in play for being able to, you know, try to, you know, gain back some of that, the financial stability if, if need be by, you know, reorganizing things, but um, you know, that's where my experience would come from, but there would probably be a fair amount of questions and trying to understand all the all the parts and pieces of a school budget for sure. Thank you. Allison, would you like to talk about your budgetary experience? Yes. Um, so I am a banking lawyer, so um, I deal with financial concepts and statements on a regular basis. So that's you know, my experience. And then in terms of the, the effort part of the, the question, um, I think in order to be able to uh, fulfill the budgetary role um, as a school committee member, it would involve um, attending meetings of other of the town bodies, such as the select board meetings. So that the, the connections can be made um, and strategies formed um, between the town budget and, and the school budget. Thank you. Um, let's hear now from Bruce Bennett, who had a comment way back, but uh, had difficulty saying it. Bruce, are you there? I hope, yes, I hope this goes better. Yes. Um, I just have a comment to make about Peter Gary, and I've worked with Peter 
um, probably for 30 years, ever since he's been in town, uh, both as a selectman and on the finance committee. And Peter, in my opinion, is very, very well qualified for this position, very knowledgeable in educational finance and budgeting, which is much different than any type of business financing. Um, Peter's a great negotiator. He can solve problems. Uh, he can talk to a lot of different types of people and from different backgrounds. And he's a very intelligent person. And uh, I would encourage anybody to vote for Peter. Thank you. I would uh, encourage people to ask questions or make comments on the issues and not necessarily endorse specific candidates. Um, thank you. Um, next, we have Nathaniel Waring, who, have, who has a question. Nathaniel, are you there? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, please ask your question. Nathaniel, can you hear us? Well, I think we've lost Nathaniel. <laughs> Do we have questions from anyone else? Nathaniel says he's trying to reconnect. Um, we can wait a little bit. Otherwise, um, it's getting to be eight o'clock. I promised that uh, our four candidates will have a chance to make a brief closing statement. Um, I have a question. Uh, yes. How much time do I have left? How much time do you have left for well, we were given 10 minutes and I thought we discussed about, I wanted to, use, or everybody agreed that we were gonna use a portion of our minutes at the beginning. Is the, is the end portion, this is a simple question, is the end portion connected to the 10 minutes? Not necessarily. I mean, you could use your 10 minutes in answering people's questions. Let me say, I think Nathaniel is trying to get back here. Let's see if we can reconnect with him. Okay, Nathaniel, if you can hear us, please ask your question. Otherwise, we're going to have to go to the next part of our program. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Wonderful. Sorry about that. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody who's running for running. Uh, I've been on the other side of these uh, forums. And I know how stressful and nerve wracking and just how much of yourself you have to put into them. And I really just appreciate it, especially during a pandemic when you know that you're going into a term that is gonna be dealing with the aftermath of all this stuff. It's really very brave of all four of you to wanna to step up and do that, and I appreciate that. Um, my question actually stems from um, Allison's opening statement. She said, mentioned that there were a couple of decisions in the past that she did not agree with or, that, or indecisions she didn't agree with. And I was curious if for all four of you, if there's any, um, examples you could give of decisions that were made in the last year during the pandemic that you would have made differently um, and what you would have made in those cases. Um, and for Peter, I guess, to, if there's anything that you, you've felt your, your administration could have done differently. Uh, who would like to address that first? I guess Allison, since she was specifically mentioned, would you like to go first? I'm not, I'm not sure if um, I've already answered Nathaniel's question by, by actually addressing it in, in um, my initial remarks, but I'm happy to, to be a little bit more specific. Um, I had mentioned inaction on the part of the, the committee um, and what I was specifically referring to there was inaction in um, 
in opening schools to in-person learning on a four day a week basis as the other three elementary schools in our district had done. Um, and that is, that is what I was referring to there. I was um, felt that we should have stayed, that our town should have um, been, been doing what the other towns were doing in that respect. And instead, Sunderland was providing half of the in-person education days um, than, than the other three elementary districts, district elementary schools. Uh, who else wants to weigh in? Before I, I go on, I just wanted to say something that not everyone has heard at the beginning. That is, if you wish to ask a question, please indicate it in the chat, because I can't see the entire assembled group at once. Thank you. May I go? Um, thank you for your question, Nathaniel. Um, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I. Um, I, I'm not a part of the committee. I I don't know enough information to um, to give uh, an opinion, but I can tell you when I was watching the Sunderland Elementary School, um, Ben Bershesky, the principal, had to navigate a question about MCAS. Um, so I'll use that for an example. Um, as a mom, I was like, no, no, we're not going to do MCAS, no. But then I remembered how much data meant when I was a teacher. Um, data about student learning um, and unfortunately we can't measure social emotional but we can measure uh, math and that sort of thing and um, adjust adjust as accordingly um, so again I'm going I'm getting off topic just bring it back so um, then uh, I was like totally against it I was against um, MCAS but then I thought about the data point and then I watched the meeting and I listened to Ben and, or maybe it was Darius and I'm sorry, I forget, but both Darius and Ben explain everything. But I don't, I binge watch and I don't know how people are watching the meetings. Um, I'm, con I'm concerned about the access. Um, and I think that the committee is doing um, the best job that they can and that we need to listen and be active participants participants in our democracy. Um, if you think this system runs autopilot, it does not. You do not need any educational, I don't know about, but you need to be a registered voter in the town you live in, and then you can run for public office. This is, this is my first time running. Um, so I would, I would want you to get more involved if, um, if there were any policies that you were um, questioning or needed more information on. Thank you. Thank you, um, Peter, and then Megan, and then I think we have two more questions in the queue. Um, can I go? Yes. Um, my view is that uh, when what happened in the spring was basically the state shut the schools down. Okay, and so it wasn't even uh, possible to consider some number of days of in-person because the governor just closed the schools and he closed them first for three weeks and then he extended it and then he extended it again and then it was at the end of the school year. And then we got uh, instructions from the Department of uh, uh, Education that we needed to plan for three outcomes for, or for three teaching models, uh, fully in-person, uh, fully remote, and a hybrid, a mixture of the two. And um, we got to the point in August where all that planning had been done and submitted. And at the same time, we were um, ramping up a whole health uh, uh, monitoring system and a whole health planning system to uh, make the building as safe as we possibly could for whenever and to whatever extent it was that we got kids back in the school. Okay, and that included things like revamping our whole uh, ventilation systems in the building so we could uh, make it safer that way and a number of other things. Um, we got to a meeting in uh, August uh, where there was uh, each town, it was a joint meeting of the four elementary school committees 
and we each ended up voting uh, what we wanted to do. And Sunderland was the uh, the one that was closest to just staying remote. We were three to two in favor of um, of going to hybrid. Nobody was nobody was talking about going to four day or five day in person at that point. Um, and my own view was that I'll be honest. You know, I'm in a I'm in a vulnerable. I, I mean, I'm a, I keep myself healthy, but I'm in a vulnerable age group, and I felt a great deal of uh, empathy for the teachers. Okay, about you know, we're not Amazon. Okay, we can't just say to our employees, "You go in there and you work." You know, and that's it. I mean, our teachers. I felt that we had to be respectful of the concerns of our teachers both for the present time and for the long-term relationship that we have with our teaching staff. We have to trust each other. We have to have each other's back, okay? Uh, we voted three to two, only three to two, just to go to hybrid. A week later, there was a question of whether we had all the proper information, and so we reopened it, and we had another long discussion, okay? And then the vote was four to one to go to hybrid, okay, which I was more comfortable with. I felt that was better. And we went to hybrid for basically all the fall, except for a couple of times, like after Thanksgiving, where cases spiked, okay? And it's easy to just say, well, you should have just gone this way and stayed there. But when cases spike in the town, okay, it, if you're a teacher, okay, you get pretty worried and pretty unhappy real fast, okay? And so, you know, we're, we're in the middle. We wanna, we wanna get the kids in school, but you have to have teachers to do it. And, and um, you have to listen to them and you have to respect their concerns. And what Allison refers to as we were, uh, we were not going to four days when the other three towns in the district were, and this was in uh, the beginning of the winter, the problem was that Sunderland, and it's partly because of its connection with UMass and a lot of UMass kids living here, Sunderland was having a lot higher caseload okay, than the other schools. And so, um, you know, Darius, to his credit, since the very beginning of this thing, has been having really good open two-way communication with the teachers union and the IA union, okay? And it just at that point was, look at, it's gonna work better if we put it off, for, I think it was three weeks we put it off, okay? Um, I, the question I think was, in my case, having been part of these decisions, do I look back and wish I'd done something differently? You know, actually, no, I think we've done real good, okay? I'm, I think that um, just, you know, one of my things always is when, you, when you're dealing with people, you have to remember that everybody is different. You also have to remember that every school is different. Every collection of, you know, one collection of teachers may be different from another collection of teachers. There may have been, you know, more people in one town not concerned at all about going back in the school as long as they had the PPE on and the spacing. And, and in others, we had teachers in our building that were keeping the windows open when it was 20 degrees out, okay, just to make sure that they got, you know, enough ventilation, even though we had the system itself was just fine. So I don't, I don't, I look back on it and I think, boy, we've, we've, we've had a constantly changing situation um, I wish we could have gotten the kids in more, but I wasn't going to, you know, risk both the health of the teachers uh, excessively, nor what I consider our long-term relationship with them and the respect that we try to have for them, um, the professionals that they are, that, you know, no, I, I'm happy with what we did. And, the, you know, now, this isn't over, okay? We're still, um, we're back five day now. Lord, I hope we, you know, I hope next fall it, we get much closer to normal. I would hope we get totally normal, um, but COVID is still around. And so we're gonna be dealing this for a while. And you know, my own view is you listen, you listen, you listen, you talk to people, you figure out what the best possible solution is. You're not gonna make everybody happy, okay? But you're trying to make, you're trying to do the best uh, uh, decisions for the school and the people that go there to learn and the people that provide the learning. And sometimes Thank it's tough, but. Thank you, Peter. Megan, do you have any quick comments about uh, decisions 
of the school committee you might have disagreed with? Um, I actually don't have any statements around this. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have two other questioners and I think we'll probably leave it at that. Um, Rob Powell, are you still there? Do you have a question? Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Rob Powell and I'm the parent of a special needs student at Sunderland Elementary. And um, what's really important to me in thinking about the school committee is who can I trust to be an advocate on behalf of our special needs students? And so I'm curious about um, about you, what about you, um, your experience, uh, your thinking uh, can help me as a, a parent of a special needs student trust that you would be an advocate uh, for us on the school committee. Who would like to address that question? Peter? Um, I would actually just like to say that I want to give credit to somebody um, who's actually on this uh, on this call, and that is Asia Cerrone, who's uh, one of the heads of the of CPAC, the Special Education Parent Advisory Committee, because that committee got let me put it this way: they got revved up. It seemed last spring, and I don't know if they were always revved up, but it seemed like you know they realized that special ed kids particularly need to be in school, and so they were. Um, they were doing what you know you hope uh, members of the community do, which is, you know, when you care about something, you come in and you make your views known. And um, Asia was regularly coming to our meetings and saying things and so on. And Asia, it, I, I believe, and and you you may tell me I'm wrong, but I believe we have gotten more and more responsive to your concerns because we are being made aware of any cases in which we are not, and. I know she came to a meeting not too long ago and said she just wanted to thank us because we have been responsive to the requests that she's made. And, um, you know, I, I won't go so far as to say, no, I have a, you know, I, I'm gonna pay attention, you know, particularly to special ed kids because my whole thing is you pay attention to the whole school, okay? Now, if there's something that's not working, you try and fix that, but you basically, you're looking out for the whole entity. Thank you. Allison, Megan, Cara, do you have a comment on special needs? Yeah, Allison, then Megan. Um, so firstly, I'm running for school committee, not simply because I want to, um, just just as as a parent right i'm i'm running because i care about kids more generally and over the course of this year i've realized how much um i really care about the educational experiences um and well-being of children more generally um and actually through attending regularly school committee meetings um, and having heard regularly from Aja, I've become more aware of, of concerns um, faced by, by that, that group and also um, being a part of the Facebook group, um, staying on top of, of developments. Um, and also, um, I have some you know, rather limited experience um, just personal experience advocating for a, accommodation. So I have some kind of idea what it takes to um, to work with the school to ensure that a child is receiving the supports that are needed and and the challenges that are faced by parents um, in making sure that that kids get what they need. Thank you. Megan or Kara? Uh, Kara, go ahead. You're on mute, Kara. Hi, sorry. Um, I'm really um, passionate about this and I just wanted the question repeated again. I was curious about um, what about you, your experience or your thinking could help me as a special needs parent trust that you'd be an advocate 
uh, for special needs children and their families on the school committee. I'm a parent of a special needs child. I got you. <laughs> Megan, do you have anything further to add? Um, I just want to say that I, I, I do feel like I would be an advocate for, for the special needs students. I know that there are so many different ways in which <clears throat> kids need to understand things in different ways and have different, different needs as far as making that available and possible and successful for them. And I, and I, you know, through Sunderland Elementary have seen how, um, you know, on, on, on the smaller side of it, you know, my one of my kids needs a little bit of extra um, space to fidget with the body. And I feel like seeing how the teachers will make space for that in the classroom is something that I feel really thankful for because it's not, um, it's not, there's not the environment that you have to sit, stay still, and and sort of you know everybody cookie cutter sitting in their seats because there's just so many different ways to learn. And so I I do think that it's very important um, to be an advocate for special needs, and I and I absolutely would like to learn more about that and how the school committee can help in those ways. Thank you. I think um, we'll take one more question from Jason Bauer Clapp. If you're still there, please ask your question. Well, I think he has left the meeting. Um, so I think at this point, we will conclude with our closing statements. I'm gonna go in reverse order from what we did at the beginning. So Kara, I'll ask you to start with your closing statement. Am I off mute already? Sorry. Um, this, was a, this was a pleasant surprise and um, thank you. Um, I've done a lot of listening and I'm a thinker and I'm a researcher. Um, I wanna connect dots. Um, I wanna make the working parts of the education system flow better. Um, that's what I did as a teacher. I facilitated um, a transparent flow of education. Um, what Megan talked about, uh, the fidget, um, that sort of thing. Um, my daughter um, is who I'm talking about. And all that I feel comfortable sharing at this time is that um, we were told the worst as parents, um, the worst news, the most devastating news. And through EI, through the support of friends, community, the list goes on. That's the reason why she's succeeding. I could go like this and say it's me, but I don't think it's solely me. I think it's, it's everyone. Um, I like to, I like to think and I, um, I was, take, I was taken off guard, Aaron, that I was closing last, so give me a second. I see myself as someone that has the background, like ask me a question about education and I can tell you or I will find out for you. Um, I'm, I'm not kidding when I said I spent my entire life in the Massachusetts public education system. Um, I didn't go away to college. I, um, I stayed here and I'm planning to stay in Sunderland. And I was planning on my students attending the Sunderland Elementary School. And as a teacher, uh, you always go and get your classroom or your space, your learning space ready. Um, and I appreciate Erin for facilitating this way that we could um, we could represent ourselves, that we could uh, speak, um, get off of social media. Um, public officials 
aren't on it. And I do have, for example, a Facebook account, but I will not be conducting any business uh, in regards to this position on Facebook or social media. Um, in my research, I got some really good things. I'm, uh, the school committee is responsible for three areas um, in no particular order. The superintendent, um, school policy, and school budget. Um, I need a lot of learning and I, and I plan on doing a lot of listening if I'm um, elected. And I plan to, um, to ask questions and to ask follow-up questions, to ask clarifying questions, um, to make this um, an effort that, uh, that everyone can stand behind. Um, I appreciate, uh, Peter, again, all of your work. Um, you know, you have all the numbers. Um, I don't, <laughs> um, but I like numbers. I, I love teaching math. I wasn't, um, planning on saying that, but I, I did, I do like numbers. I like patterns. Um, and while I don't know it at the state budget specifically, I have the passion and desire to work here, to donate my time for the Sunderland Elementary School on behalf of all students. And um, I will be here um, on Saturday, uh, May 1st. Um, Hadley has a fishing derby the same day, um, but I believe if uh, Aaron gave the um, information, you can vote early. Um, you can head on back from the fishing derby and you can stop by if you want, um, talk to me. Uh, I had planned before this evening to be able to give you an email and I, actually, I don't know if maybe Peter, with the experience, you could answer this question and I'm not asking it to put you in a position and I, I open, it's an open question. Um, am I allowed, excuse me, to, um, while I'm running, do, am I allowed to have an email? So I was thinking I would um, start an email um, and I just wanna make sure that it's allowed in this um, dem democratic process. Um, and the email would be a way and an access for all Sunderland voters to contact me um, because I'm a good listener and I'm doing this for the most genuine reasons. Um, thank you everybody for attending the questions. Thank you to Peter and Allison and Megan. Um, we're all doing this. Like I said, I, I listened before the meeting. I said, I think we're kind of doing this all for similar reasons and I think I'm right. <laughs> um, so I would appreciate your vote on May 1st. Um, or the pre-election that um, Aaron gave at the beginning of this. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Kara. And yes, all elected officials are required to be reachable and accessible. And I think that goes for candidates as well in whatever modality you choose. Uh, next, we'll hear a closing statement from Peter. Um, just a couple of things in closing. Uh, given the, the all the interest during the whole COVID time in, in what the school was doing, we've had a tremendously greater um, public coming to our meetings and speaking to our meetings. And I just wanna say, I think that's been wonderful, okay? It's been, um, I sit there, I mean, I, you really, you know, I talked about communication. Communication is, you know, listening as well as talking. And I sit there and I, you know, it may go on for half an hour and you listen and you think each one of them, each one of the comments that we hear makes you think, okay, how does this, you know, how can I, uh, you know, address this person's concern? Um, furthermore, it's been, you know, I talked about the importance of respect. Everybody that's come and talked to our committee, okay, has done it in a respectful way. Okay, it hasn't been, uh, you know, it hasn't, it, it's been passionate, but it hasn't been angry. Okay, it's been respectful. It's been just what you would hope for in a community. And so I would encourage that, um, you know, it makes our meetings longer, but boy, it sure makes them better. So if people are interested in something, uh, keep coming, keep letting us know what you think. Um, 
it's also good to see people running for office because this town struggles to get people to run for office. And so um, there are, you know, there always are opportunities to contribute to the town. And my experience uh, of doing that is that, uh, that the town benefits, but you also benefit by doing something for somebody other than yourself. Uh, you benefit greatly. Um, finally, thank you, Aaron, for organizing this. Um, it's been a pleasure and an honor to come and talk about our great school. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Next uh, closing statement will be from Megan. Um, thank you, Aaron. I'd like to thank you again and everybody that turned out to ask questions and <clears throat> challenge our our ways of thinking and how we can be best suited for being a part of the school committee. I think that um, I appreciate hearing all the responses and, and Peter, your experience is, is um, it's amazing. And it's something that I really look forward to um, hearing more of and, and learning from. I think that I am really excited and energized about what the possibilities are in this in this setting in the context and I um, you know I know that I'm young and new I'm not so much young actually but I'm new to the process and I have humility but also um, am proud of the skill sets that I have and and who I am and what I can bring to this and you know I know that um, it's going to be a learning process for me but I plan to invest the time that is needed and the energy into being aware of the situations ahead of the committee and, and trying to help facilitate answers to the questions that will be inclusive and helpful to the students' experience and, and needs. And again, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Megan. And lastly, we'll hear a closing statement from Allison. So I hope that I've been able to give those that are in attendance an idea of um, who I am and what my motivations are for running for school committee and what my goals um, for for the school committee are going forward. Um, you know, I, I really have been motivated by what's happened over the last year and how um, it's really highlighted how important school is to children, not only for academic reasons, but for social interaction and emotional and mental health. Um, so that's where I'm coming from for that. And I think that the biggest challenge for the school and the school committee is, is to address what the children have lost this year, which is, is really tremendous, both on an academic and a mental health level. Um, so that, that is certainly, um, you know, what motivates me and, and what, what my efforts will be focused on um, and initially and for however long that it takes. Um, you know, and having decided to run for school committee, when I decide to do something, um, I, if I am elected, I will put my all into it because that's, that's who I am. I'm, I'm very detail oriented and thorough. Um, so I hope you'll consider voting for me on May 1st. And um, thank you very much again, um, Aaron. And um, thank you to the fellow, my fellow candidates and everyone who's taken the time to listen this evening. Thank you, Allison. And I would just like to reiterate and echo what Allison just did, said. Thank you all for coming. This is how democracy works. Uh, thank you to all of the candidates. I certainly wish each of you luck. I would just like to say one word of uh, acknowledgement to Kara Gori. You may not know, but she very recently experienced a tragic death in her family, and it took a lot of courage and emotional strength for her to be here tonight. So I just want to salute that and honor that. Um, again, the details about the election. The election will take place in person here at the Sunderland Library on May 1st between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. 
If you wish to vote in person early, you can do so at the town offices building outside the town clerk's office. That's starting on April 26th until the election. You can vote by mail in ballot. You must apply for a mail in ballot. The deadline for doing that is April 27th. You can find the form to apply for the mail in ballot on the town website, townofsunderland.us. If you go to the bottom of the screen, there's a um, item you can click on for voting information and there you can find um, the application for mail-in ballots. Um, this program tonight has been recorded. It will be uh, on FCAT's YouTube channel and hopefully also on the Sunderland Library website. So if you have friends who unfortunately were not able to come tonight, you can ask them if they wish to view tonight's program. They can certainly do so by one of those means, or you can watch it again if you feel you want to listen more closely and carefully to what the candidates have been saying. Thank you all for coming. I wish you all a good night and thank you for participating in this forum.